I, um, I just fooled around with stuff. I, I worked with clay, oil-based clay, and I uh, could stamp it down flat against those Sunday funnies, and it would pull off that image right off the newspaper. I don't know if you can do that today or not, but I could transfer it into a piece of white paper. And I just got hooked on the notion of making my own funnies and making books and just transferring things to paper. Coming up only to hold you under And coming up only to show you wrong When Linwood came back to the UT to get his master's, my dad got interested in printmaking. He used to go up to Chicago every year for a radiology conference because he was a doctor. And he got a book for us called The Bite of the Print. And we both read it and we both fell madly in love with printmaking as a, a social commentary. I believe this to be true. And I was told at the time that it's true. And certainly the lady who had the classes told me it was true. I was the first person to get a Master of Fine Arts degree in printmaking from the University of Texas. I got maybe three job offers, but the only one that allowed me to teach printmaking was the one right here at Texas Tech. Linwood definitely made me better as an artist. The, uh, you know, the, te the teacher I had before him, my primary teacher, he uh, pretty much just said, make lots of art, you know, which was great advice. But Linwood was more, uh, make art but be more discriminant you know think more about what you're doing there and how it is coming across how it's communicating after it had been going for like a year and a half and we had a waiting list for the classes it was extremely popular um, the chair called me in and he said well you won't be teaching printmaking next year but he said you don't know anything you don't know how to do silk screen and i I said, I, I thought, you know, um, for a moment about my wife and three children, and I said, I know everything about silk screen printing. And I've already told you that was a deliberate lie because we never learned anything about it at UT. And the chairman said, I've never seen any. I said, we've only been here a year and a half. We haven't even unpacked yet. So I went home. I was like, what? I'm not going to let you teach printmaking. So he got the book. Called Begielison's The Complete <laughs> Screen Printer. I got some 10 double X silk organdy and stretched them over a painting frame and used some cardboard for a squeegee and I printed about a five color print, took it to him the following Monday morning and he said, hey, looks okay to me. Then I learned how to do screen printing. <laughs> <laughs> and so I was much relieved that he could continue teaching printmaking because that's what he wanted to do. The other jobs he was offered uh, were mostly teaching design comm is what we call it now and uh, he really was in love with printmaking. Back in the 70s, printmaking as uh, a medium that artists concentrated on solely was pretty much invented by Linwood and his generation. Before that, it was, you know, Andy Warhol had people do prints for him. You know, painters had other people do their prints. But there, there was a new crowd, and it was, it was primarily focused on the university system. That's where most of these artists were, just because you had to have access to all the equipment that printmakers needed. He was one of the first ones to say, you can make art with silkscreen printing. Before that, you know, it was doing posters and t-shirts and, you know, and the occasional shortcut by Andy Warhol's workers. But uh, he was, he said, you know, you can make original art in multiples using silkscreen. And, you know, he started teaching that and some other, you know, a few other uh, professors and artists around the country picked up on that. And, you know, within 10 years, it, it grew into a, a major part of printmaking programs in the university. One of the best things that happened to printmaking is they tried to define it in one, one meeting after another, and they could not define it, so they gave up. And it was the greatest thing that ever happened to printmaking, in my opinion. Now, I'm not a printmaker, but I certainly have watched it at close hand. And I thought it was a great thing. I thought, good, 
Now, now they're free to do what they want to do. They don't have to work within any kind of narrow parameters. Within the arts, there are hierarchical kind of, there are artificial things. Uh, there are great screen prints and lousy paintings. And I get asked that question a lot in interviews. And I can remember some woman asking me on television in some town, I've done 80 visiting artist things. And she said, I forget where it was, Iowa, I think. And I was on the local TV and she said, well, isn't the most valuable thing an oil painting? You know, and I said, you know what? Right now, someone is pulling up their desk chair before a, a store-bought easel before a store-bought stretched canvas about to produce a perfectly worthless oil painting and someone else is at a press and is producing a, a wonderful, beautiful, valuable print. It all depends on the artist as to whether the thing has got a value or not.